Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, Pascal's triangle two. We have solved the first one of this problem, but we solved it a long time ago. And it's pretty much the exact same as the first problem, to be honest. If you can solve the first one, you can probably solve this one. The first one was we are trying to return the first like n rows of the Pascal's triangle. In this case, we're just trying to return a single row. So in this case, row index is three. So this is row zero, row one, row two, and this is row three. We want to return all the values in that row. That's pretty much it and the main idea i'm going to kind of do it slightly different i guess than the first solution that i did for this problem you can pretty much write it the same way i did for the first solution but i'm going to solve this more like i solved elite code 799 which is called champagne tower that's a much harder problem but it's actually very similar to this problem and the idea is that we have uh, first of all just to review pascal's triangle we start with a one in the root and there's just one value in the first row now in the second row there's going to be two values and we get those values by taking the two parents of this value so if this had a left parent we would take that value and we would take this right parent and add them into this spot it doesn't have a left parent so we just put a one here same thing here it doesn't have a right parent but it has a left parent so we put the one there now we get three values boom 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 here doesn't have a left parent it does have a right parent so this is going to be a one same thing here has a left parent no right parent put a one here and now it's kind of hard to read but there's going to be a middle value here too this has both a left and right parent let's put a two here now the pattern that is starting to emerge is that the edge values are always going to be one and you can kind of tell that from this picture as well because no edge values are going to have two parents that makes sense now for these last two let's just fill them in real quick it has a left parent here one plus two put three there here two plus one put three here so this is pretty simple and we could code it up this way but it's gonna be easier to think about it in the opposite direction just like with leak code 799 which was champagne tower the idea is instead of thinking about it in terms of parents because as you can see we're going to get an index out of bounds if we think about it in that way we're going to get index out of bounds for like the edge values but we could also think about it from the perspective of the parent for every parent we are given two children right that's always going to be the case there's no index out of bounds from that perspective every one of these parents has two children every single one of these unless of course the last row but that doesn't really count because we don't need to populate any row beyond that but you can see this it's kind of like a tree structure isn't it knowing that what we can do here is notice the pattern this is just index zero this is index zero and index one this is index zero one and two this is index zero one two and three so the pattern is that for index zero when we're populating the next row we know that one pattern is that this is going to be of length one this is two this is three this is four that's very very simple but to know where the children are index zero here has a child also at index zero and a child at index one index zero over here same thing has a child at index zero and index one index zero over here same exact thing has a child at index zero and a child at index one now what about this guy this one over here has a child at index one and index two and index two here has a child at index two and index three so the pattern is that every single position every value is gonna have a child at the same index so one to one here and also at the index plus one then it becomes pretty easy given a row like this we can populate the next row very very easily i'll show you how we're going to do that so forget this whole structure we have five values in this row i'll kind of try to draw it as cleanly as possible for this guy we're going to take its value put it here and put it here one and one this guy three we're going to take its value and add it to this which is going to make this a four and we're going to put a three here then this guy add it to whatever is here which is three so three plus three is going to be six and then take that three and also put it over here and then take this one add it to this value that's going to be four and take this one and add it to this value that's going to be one so it's pretty obvious why this works like intuitively if you even watch the gif of this 
on leak codes problem statement, you'll see that that's exactly what's going on. We're just taking this value, pushing it into its two children, and that's pretty much the solution. So now let's code it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just declare the first row. We know the row index is always gonna be, I believe, zero or greater, and this is the first row. And we're trying to ultimately populate the row index and then return it. Suppose row index is three. We know this is the zeroth row. If we wanna populate the third row, then we have to iterate for, let's say, i in range row index times, this many more times to populate the row that we wanna return. Now, let's compute the next row. So I guess I'll just call it next row like this. We know that the values we put here, let's just start with all zeros because we're gonna be adding the parents to these positions. What's the length of this row gonna be? Probably the length of the previous row plus one. So this is how you can do that in Python. This is the length, we're multiplying it by the array. I know it's kind of weird syntax if you're used to other languages, but it's pretty simple. Now, we want to, for j in range length of the result, we wanna iterate over every value in the previous row. And when we do that, we're gonna take the value from the previous row, result at index j, and add it to the child at next row at index j. We're adding that to the same index. And we're gonna do the exact same thing for next row at j plus one. Just like we talked about, we're adding it at the same index and the next index in the next row. And after we're done with that, the next thing we should do before we go to the next iteration of the loop is just update the result and set it to next row. And that is pretty much the entire solution. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.